y'all, it's Kaylee. Welcome to Hippie in a Suit, where every week I talk about sustainability. Why, you ask? Because I dream of a world where a global pandemic does not create 50 new billionaires. Today, I'm going to be covering the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, or as you may know them, the SDGs, Global Goals, or 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. I'm going to attempt to give you everything you need to know about them in just 10 minutes or less, so we better get going. The 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development was adopted on September 25th, 2015, universally. Universal adoption means that every single country, all 193 UN member states, agreed. I'm sure you can imagine that getting 193 countries to agree on anything is next to impossible, but that's what makes this agenda so groundbreaking. The reason we saw such broad support and adoption of the 2030 agenda is that it was built on the groundwork of two previous processes that laid a strong foundation. The first was Agenda 21 that was adopted at the 1992 Rio Earth Summit and laid out a whole bunch of environmental priorities for the planet. The second were the Millennium Development Goals that were spearheaded by the UN Secretary General at the time, Kofi Annan. These were eight goals targeted at developing countries and mainly focused on human development. So things like eliminating poverty, universal primary education, gender equality, child and maternal health, fighting against diseases, and even environmental sustainability, but at a very high level. So the global community had these two processes, one environmentally focused and one human development focused. And in 2012, at the Rio Plus 20 Earth Summit, world leaders agreed to bring the two processes together to create a more comprehensive framework that would be relevant to every country on the planet, regardless of its level of development, and to adopt it as a global community. The 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development is referred to as a comprehensive action plan for people, planet, and prosperity. This relates directly to the three pillars of sustainable development, social, environmental, and economic that I talked about in my first video, which you can find up here. Interestingly, the 2030 Agenda also added the notion of peace and partnership to those traditional pillars of sustainability to create the five Ps, people, planet, prosperity, peace, and partnership. The agenda is made up of 17 goals, 169 targets, and over 230 indicators for measuring progress. So to say it's comprehensive would be a bit of an understatement. In fact, that is one of the biggest criticisms of the agenda is that it's so far reaching that it's hard to prioritize and know what is the most important. The 17 goals, they touch on everything from ending poverty, achieving gender equality, protecting the planet, both our land and our water, combating climate change, creating sustainable economies, limiting our consumption, and even good governance and peace. You can see now what I mean by the agenda kind of including everything, but in fact, as I mentioned in the history, this was quite deliberate. It was meant to create a more comprehensive picture of sustainable development. It was also meant to be rooted in a few fundamental principles that were not included in previous agendas. First, it's integrated. This means that it recognizes the systemic nature of our world and the interconnectedness between various domains of society. It says we cannot make policies in a vacuum. We have to think about how they affect each other. Second, it's universal. This means that it applies as much to the richest countries as it does to the poorest countries, meaning that it applies equally to every single country, no matter what their situation, no matter what their context. The Millennium Development Goals that came before really focused on developing countries, and, and that was great. However, this agenda says to every country on the planet, none of you have achieved a sustainable society, and we need to get moving. Each of you have work to do. I like this because it creates more of a community approach and a, a collective effort in delivering the agenda. And thirdly, it is inclusive. The agenda was adopted by countries, yes, uh, so it's ultimately their responsibility, but it was developed using the results of a five million person survey called the My World Survey, and 
directly in the text, it says that we need to engage all sectors of society in order to achieve it. So whether that be NGOs and civil society, academics and researchers, the private sector, international organizations and community, and of course governments as well, all of them need to be at the table. And the final fundamental principle of the 2030 agenda is leaving no one behind or starting with the most vulnerable first. This comes from a big lesson out of the Millennium Development Goals, which was while there was progress made in some countries, others fell way further behind. So a lot of the success that happened in the Millennium Development Goals was actually attributed to the economic development of China over that period. And in fact, some of the more vulnerable countries fell further and further behind. So this agenda, the 2030 agenda and the SDGs focuses on how you reach those furthest behind, whether that be a country or groups within the country first, so that our progress can be assured to be helping those who are the most vulnerable. As the name probably suggests, the 2030 agenda will end in 2030. It's a 15 year agenda running from 2015 to 2030. Every single year we review progress of the agenda at the high level political forum, which is an event that takes place in New York in July. At that event, the global community looks at progress on certain goals and at certain countries and looks for gaps, opportunities, new solutions and ways to accelerate implementation. We are currently in what's being referred to as the decade of action because we were five years into the agenda and only have a decade left to deliver. That was kicked off in 2020 and that happened right around the same time as the pandemic. So this agenda is facing a great deal of challenges as we try and overcome the massive progress that was set back by the pandemic. If there is one thing for certain, it's that we need action now. As Winston Churchill famously said, never let a good crisis go to waste. And this applies so much to the 2030 agenda. We have been set back very far in progress and we need action in order to make that time up and to have good results on the agenda by the time 2030 comes. Not just so we can say we had good results, but because it's so fundamental to ourselves, our planet and vulnerable communities all over the world. One of my viewers mentioned that there's so much information in these videos that a summary would be helpful. So let's give that a try. The 2030 agenda was universally adopted in September, 2015 by all 193 member states of the United Nations. It was the evolution of two previous processes, agenda 21 and the millennium development goals. It is made up of 17 sustainable development goals that span social, environmental, and economic priorities, as well as 169 targets and over 230 indicators. It has four fundamental principles embedded in it, integration, universality, inclusivity, and leaving no one behind. The agenda is reviewed every single year to ensure that we are progressing. We are now in the decade of action and it is needed more than ever given the progress that we have lost due to COVID-19. I'm going to be making two series here on the channel related to this topic in the coming months. One that looks at each SDG and explains what it is and where we currently stand on it. And a second that looks at how the pandemic is affecting sustainable development and the SDGs. So I hope you'll tune in for those. That's it for today. Thank you so much for being here. I hope you learned something. And if you have any questions, leave it in the comments below and I will do my best to respond and provide resources where you can learn more. As always, I also have a blog post Post that summarizes this topic, provides links to my research, additional resources for reading, and a couple of organizations who work in this field that you may want to follow or support if this topic interests you. Thank you so much for the support. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. It really helps out the channel. Thank you so much again, and I look forward to seeing you soon. Take care and keep fighting the good fight. Bye.